Hello, I'm going to start this video by saying that I do apologize for the quality of this video. Um, I, I am no expert in photography or videography. Um, I just wanted to do this video and um, I kind of touched on this, uh, the last video of the piece of broken table that I had autographed by Sabu and by Rob Van Dam and by Bobby Duncan Jr. and the Canadian Tiger. I told you about a very rare autograph, and I'm just going to start showing you and see if you know who this is automatically, which I'm sure a lot of the professionals, not professionals, I apologize, a lot of the, you know, connoisseurs of real wrestling will automatically know that it is, I'm going to just zoom in over here to this, the Sheik, the Noble Sheik, Ed Farhat who passed away in 2003. He was originally in the military, the U.S. Army, and then he got into wrestling in 1949. And he had his actual last match, or his retirement, basically, in 1998. I won't say his last match, but he had his retirement in 1998 because, actually, starting this, uh, before I started this video, I watched his retirement ceremony over in the Far East, and... That is the closest you will ever see to the king of kayfabe breaking character. Um, I mean, he still was dressed to the nines. He had Sabu right there who never broke character. Um, you know, he was still throwing the sword down and sticking in the mat. But two things, two things that set that retirement ceremony apart was for the first time in my life, and as far as I know, the first time ever, I actually saw him shake hands with somebody um, in a kind way. Um, he shook hands with the gentleman, and he actually hugged the, the same, same gentleman. And then there was another gentleman, a wrestler, I believe, who he hugged after. So he hugged two people, and he shook hands with one person. And that's the closest that I've ever seen to Ed Farhat, the noble sheik, breaking character. And that's why that makes this so special. This is a autograph from the Noble Sheik to a gentleman. And um, you'll see that, um, to my knowledge, this is the only autograph that I've ever found where it was to a certain person with a kind, a kind comment. To Mark, you're in sports. And then it has the Sheik. And this is a real legitimate autograph. And I'm going to take it out here, but I'm going to just zoom it back and just show right here. Um, I do have the flash on, but most likely it'll go off at some point. So I'm just going to show you that I have this, uh, you know, the lighting right here. So um, like I said, I'm in I'm no means an expert in photography or videography. So, but I'm going to take this out now and, oops, sorry, and show you. Um... And with most anything of value, it all depends on rarity and condition and demand. Well, with most autographs, if it's personalized, if it's a personalized autograph, then it actually brings down the value. But with the Sheik, it's 100% different because the Sheik, um, to the best of my knowledge, um, the Sheik, I've never seen another autograph like this that was autographed by the Sheik in a personalized way and I'm gonna try to get down here and have this I'm trying to sorry I'm trying to have this balance to where I'm gonna zoom in and show you that this is this is a legitimate it's not a facsimile it's a real yeah I knew the, ah, the flash turned off I knew it would because my flash is something's wrong with it but I'm gonna I don't know if you can actually see <laughs> I don't know why this is not recording as it should but I was watching an interview with uh, Jim Cornette and People can say whatever they want about Jim Cornette, but one thing is he's extremely knowledgeable. And like uh, Mr. Cornette said, um, there, to his knowledge, 
um, and well, actually to everybody's knowledge, there's never been a home video of the Sheik uh, breaking character. There's never been an interview of the Sheik breaking character. Um, the Sheik was the Sheik 24-7, and there were stories of whenever um, he, they would, he would invite the wrestlers over to his house, that the baby faces would not eat with the heels. And there were stories of Bobo Brazil having eaten a, the, a totally different room from the Sheik. Um, the Sheik was the Sheik. I mean, out in public, uh, whenever he was in the arena, um, you know, there was a story about, um, and don't quote me on this, but I'm just going to, um, you know, tried to tell the story the best way I remember, and it was on YouTube also, where um, there was a gentleman that um, said he went to school, school with Ed Farhat, uh, the Sheik, and he knew it. He knew the Sheik was Ed Farhat, and uh, the Sheik did not break character. The guy demanded to see the Sheik, and the Sheik came out and like pinned him up against the wall and whispered in his ear that he was Ed Farhat, and that if he told anybody that he would kill kill him. Um, now, like I said, do not quote me on that, but that's how serious, that's how serious he was about being the Sheik. So, that's what makes this autograph so rare, is, you know, it's the Sheik. Now, this is the Sheik, and I'm going to put him back up here. This is a legitimate autograph. I'm just trying to show you that there is depth to it. It's not a facsimile. Uh, this is like a, I'm trying to, uh, trying to see what kind of type of paper this actually is. It looks to me because there's um, right here, there is, um, it shows, it's like a, a photocopy of a picture and then it's autographed on top of the, because you can see the piece of tape there that was there when it was photocopied, but it, there is no tape. It's not tape there. It's, there is no, there's no tape. It's just a photocopy. And then that shows the tape that was there, but uh, like I was, I actually forget where I left off, but um, let me try to collect my thoughts. Um, well, let's just talk about the Noble Sheik. Like I said, um, this is a picture of the Sheik. Now, this is the Sheik without the belt. So, I mean, I am just trying to think of the person that would have been able to get this autographed by the Sheik. I'm just going to put it up like this, and, um, I mean, the person who, you know, because the Sheik was the Sheik 24-7, and he was the champion most of the time, and to have a picture like this without him, without him with a belt, and to have a kind, uh, you know, an autograph with a kind message on it, um, I mean, it's just a rarity that I've never seen before, so I just wanted to show it. Uh, to y'all and put it on here and like I said I mean the quality of this video I you know is not going to be the best I'll tell you that and I'll just be honest with you um, but I'm just going to pull out here and show you the and then I'm going to turn it over and just show that it's just this is what the back looks like I mean it's nothing nothing special it's just a photographed picture that was autographed to someone personally with a kind message. And like I said, the Sheik being the Sheik 24-7, you never saw him break character. So for him to autograph this to Mark with a kind message and with him autographing this without the belt, it just says something to me that this person was a very special person to the Sheik, Ed Farhat. So um, I just wanted to show you this. And uh, what do you think the value? I'm going to see. I was asking you all that, what do you thought the value was on um, the item. The, here, I'll just show you right here. Uh, I've got it up against the wall. Oh, gosh. Sorry about that. And now it's not. Huh. Really? Oh, sorry. There it goes. Yeah. That's the item that yesterday uh, or the, a couple days before I did the video. And please forgive the condition it's, you know, our place is lived in, so, but I asked you what you thought the condition was of, I mean, not the condition, the rarity and the value of this item, and you can see that item in, um, 
a video that I have posted on my channel, but uh, that was the item that has um, Sabu and Bobby Duncan Jr., Rob Van Dam, and the Canadian Tiger, and I got that from a match in 1998. I had that autographed, but like I said, that's a whole nother video, but I mentioned this in that video, and what do you think the... What do you think the value is on this? The, the rarity and the value. U.S. dollars. What do you think this is actually worth as an autograph to a collector? For, a, you know, someone that collects the Sheik, Ed Farhat, merchandise. I will tell you this right now, that this is actually on. Um, it's the feature picture of, on a website that was actually endorsed by Ed Farhat, the Noble Sheik, when he was alive. Now, the Sheik, I believe, died in 2003, and he wrestled from 49 to 98. He retired, and um, I'm going to put the link to this website in uh, my description, and you can click on this link and go to the gallery of pictures, and I forget which gallery it is, but this is the main picture and it says this is my this is my favorite picture for good reason and i believe the reason why was my brother my brother actually faxed i think he faxed the gentleman who ran that website and i do believe his name was mark farinetti mark farinetti because i remember my brother god bless his soul my mirror image identical twin brother I mean, he's the one this was his and um god bless his soul um uh, but he sent this, he faxed this picture to Mark Farinetti on this website that I'm going to give you the link to. And he, and uh, Mark Farinetti put this in his gallery and said this was his favorite picture for good reason. And for good reason, I believe it was because it says, to Mark, you're in sports. Now, I cannot guarantee this, this actually could have been signed to Mark Farinetti because... Um, and my brother could have purchased it off him. Um, I don't know the story 100%. I just know that my brother had it. And I remember that, you know, somehow, some way, either maybe bought it off Mark Farinetti or um, he sent the picture to Mark Farinetti and Mark Farinetti put it on the um, website. But it was a website dedicated to the Sheik and it was endorsed by the Sheik while he was alive. Now this website is no longer in use. You can still click on the link and you can still look at the pictures and everything, but it's not its not something that is functionable, I believe on, um, I don't know, I'm just gonna put the link and then you just click on it, go to the gallery of pictures and you will definitely see where this picture is on there. And it is quoted, it is, I mean, I'm not gonna say quote, it, it is on there saying something uh, to the degree of, this is my favorite picture for good reason. So, and I'm going to show you something else. This is the autograph, and um, I've got some other items right here. We're speaking of my brother and I. Um, speaking of Sabu and the Sheik, I think you're going to recognize this. This is my brother and I, actually in I believe 2002 and for anybody that knows the uh, Sabu and ECW uh, that's us in the Tennessee snow so I'm just saying my brother my brother um, he was the biggest real wrestling fan that I knew and when I talk about real wrestling I mean I'm talking about people like Harley Race and the Ric Flair and uh, Wahoo McDaniels and uh, the Stomper. Um, I mean, I'm just talking about real, real. And I'm, you know, I, like I said, I can get into this in a whole nother video about what we call, what I call real wrestling. Um, but, um, sorry, this, I don't know why this is not working correctly. And I'm sorry for the quality of this video. But I'm going to just show you some pictures of my brother and I. And we're talking about, this is just, this is how much we had respect for Sabu and the Sheik. I mean, you're talking about this is Christmas time. And we're posing in front of the Christmas tree at my mom's house in Florida. My brother, my mirror image identical twin brother, is the one in the black and white shirt. 
and I'm in the the brown but as I was saying my brother is the biggest wrestling fan that I have ever met in person and we both enjoyed real wrestling like you know like I said um, like um, Harley Race I'm just gonna use him as the example he is the example of all examples to me and and to a lot of people um, I'm going to get into that in, in, a, in another video about, you know, everybody has their favorites. I mean, I grew up, you know, I was a young child in the 80s, you know, and in the early 90s, I was in my, you know, lower teens. So, um, and I was born and raised in Florida, so I was more subject to Florida Championship Wrestling and Dusty Rhodes and Eddie Graham. And I mentioned a story about my... Uh, father taking us to the matches when we were young and watching I remember Dusty Rhodes in a bull rope match bloody bull rope match and uh there's my brother and I I'm actually the one that's uh striking the pose right there reminiscent of Sabu and this was here in Tennessee when we first moved here and uh I'm going to be all over the place. You know, I'm just being honest with you when it comes to this conversation, but uh, this is one of my favorite pictures of all times. No, I mean, the ones I've showed you of my brother and I, they're all very, all very special to me. But my, this is my brother when he worked for Publix, and he posed with the Santa Claus, Santa Claus in front of the tree while he was working at Publix. And he's, you know, it's up there, you know, striking the pose, you know, as a tribute to Sabu. And that's my brother. He spent at least 10 years with Publix in Florida. And I love my brother very much. I have a tattoo dedicated to him on my chest, and it says you will always be the best part of me from the beginning throughout eternity, so. And I'm going to show you, those are pictures of Jason and I, and I'm going to show you some pictures that Jason took, and I'll see if you recognize. Now these are pictures that he actually took at wrestling matches, and that is the legendary Sabu right there. That's Sabu. And like I said, these are real, real pictures, so I'm just going to go through them. And I'm sorry about the focusing. Sorry about the focusing. It's, I don't know why this is. Sorry. That's Sabu again. Similar, but not exact. And it looks like he's, yep, I think that is Taz. I'm pretty sure that's Taz. And because I have some other pictures that's showing up that I'm going to show you that has Sabu versus Taz in them. And that's, I believe, the match that he was at at this point. So that's that. And speaking of, there's Taz and Sabu right there. My brother took that picture. He took all these actually, the ones I'm showing you right now. So, Taz and Sabu, back in the day. Like I said, these are all pictures. These are all real, original, you know, pictures that he took. There's Taz and Sabu. Banging Taz banging Sabu up against the looks like a rolled garage door or something. Or it could have been part of the concession stand or I wasn't there. Something. But 
that's Taz and Sabu again. But yeah, I highly recommend if you haven't seen the retirement ceremony for the Sheik, uh, just go on YouTube and look it up. Just look up Sheik Retirement. It's, it was in 1998. Sabu where he broke the table I'm pretty sure that he's the one that broke the table he probably landed on the gentleman with the skulls right there I forget his name but I have a picture that's going to show Sabu I think at the moment of impact where his leg is dropping on top of this gentleman with the skulls right here but yeah just google the I mean not google go to on YouTube look at the video for the Sheik's retirement. It's uh, totally awesome. And that's the moment where Sabu's leg drops on top of this, this gentleman right here. My brother timed it pretty perfect. As he's, you can tell that he's just about ready to land on top of the guy and break the table, so. And I just have a few more. Actually, I have one more, and this shows Sabu laying down with his bloody pants. That shows his, that's his blood on his pants right there. That's Sabu. And those were all pictures that my brother took at the matches. So, I'm just going to end this video now. But, you know, God bless Ed Farhat, the noble sheik. God bless his nephew, Sabu. God bless all the real legendary wrestlers like Harley Race. I'm going to make a video about some other issues of wrestling, but I'm going to end this one now. Thank you very much, and thank you for watching. I do apologize for the quality of this video. And uh, I'm just going to give you one more shot of this as I talk and well, as I leave out, uh, as I start to end this video. But, uh, yeah, um, just comment below and let me know what you think of the rarity of this item and how much this is actually worth. I mean, realistically, real realistically, what is this worth in U.S. dollars to a collector of Ed Farhat and uh, the Noble Sheik? And uh, God bless the, the Sheik and his family. God bless Sabu. And God bless all the legends that have gone on and that are still with us. And, you know, like I said, I'm just going to say that uh, wrestling is a real sport. These are real athletes. And uh, I was thinking about this today where that interview with uh, John Stossel and uh, Dr., uh, Dr. D. David Schultz, I believe, if I'm wrong with the name, then I apologize, but uh, the infamous incident where John Stossel was asked him if wrestling was real, and uh, John Stossel, I mean, uh, Dr. D. David Schultz slapped him and said something about, this is, is that real? That's an open hand slap. And, uh, you know, uh, John Stossel ended up suing, and uh, I don't know exactly how much he received, but he definitely received a settlement because I believe he said that... Uh, he had his eardrum busted by that slap. And, uh, you know, people can say whatever they want about, you know, whether that was right or wrong or, you know. But uh, I'm of the opinion of many people, just like Harley Race. And, uh, you know, that was back in a time whenever you defended the business at pretty much all cost. I'm not going to say at all cost because there are certain limits. But, I mean, there are stories of wrestlers that are in bars or, you know, and I'm talking about in the, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s or whatever. And they were in the bars or in the, you know, restaurants. And, you know, people would ask, is wrestling real? And that's fake. And, you know, and they would 
you know, stand up for their business, stand up for their profession. I mean, that profession was like, you know, like Harley uh, Ray said, when he was holding that NWA championship belt, he was the man. I mean, it doesn't matter if he traveled over overseas or if he was in Australia or in the United States or anywhere he went. Back in the, you know, I'm just going to say before, let's just, I, I'm not going to give it a time period, but let's just say in the 70s and 80s, you know, early 80s, 70s, um, the NWO champion was the man. I mean, he was the, 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 the creme de la creme. The, he was the El Presidente. I mean, you know, like Harley Ray said, I mean, you know, that belt meant more to him than pretty much anything on earth. And that, that was the truth. I mean, you defended, you know, the legendary wrestlers like, like Harley Race and Ric Flair and Terry Funk and Dory Funk and I, I mean, Wahoo. And I can, like, the list can go on and on. And I'm not just, um, you know, saying those few wrestlers. There are so many countless, you know, um, but you defended the business like you defended your wife, like you defended your children, like you would defend your country. Um, you know, that was your livelihood. And um, these these gentlemen um, were very high quality, uh, sorry, high quality supreme athletes, and they were intellectual. Yes, I mean, like I said in the video before, before the, you know, this it may have been quote unquote scripted. It may have been, you know, to where the punches were not actual, you know, punches that were meant to do bodily harm. But I mean. You try being Ric Flair and going nonstop 60 minutes. That's why they call him the 60-minute man. Imagine going 60 minutes every night a Broadway. You try doing that. I mean, you have to be in the peak physical condition. Uh, you have to be in peak physical conditioning. And, you know, your, your um, intellect has to be there, too, to choreograph the moves. And, um, you know, I'm just saying, you have to be... You're like an Olympic quality athlete and you are an Oscar winning performer all in one when you are in the top let's just say the top 1% or when you are the, when you're in the top of your field in wrestling when you are the NWA champion or when you are on, you know on the top of the the pay list you are a supreme athlete you are in supreme intellect and um, I have nothing but respect um, so I, I like I said I could go on and on but God bless you, and thank you for watching this video. Um, please like this video if you like it. If you don't like it, just hit the dislike, and please comment below. And uh, like I said, I apologize for the quality of this video. And if I, you know, rambled on, if I said things over and over, I do apologize. So thank you very much, and uh, God bless. God bless.